Hey there, and welcome back to your end of week show for all things gaming news. I'm your host, The Lucky TCP, and this is GNN. Okay, so before we jump into this week's news, let's recap last week. Rocket League announced a mobile game called Rocket League Sideswipe. It's coming later this year. Turtle Rock Studios announced that Back for Blood is going to be delayed until October 12th, 2021. There is, however, an open beta coming this summer. A Ghost of Tsushima movie is in development, and it's directed by Chad Stahelski, the guy who did John Wick. What's nice about it is Sucker Punch Productions will serve as an executive producer on the movie. Xbox is now testing a no live requirement for Warzone, Fortnite, and other games. This means you won't need a subscription to play these free-to-play games. Which is, in my opinion, how it should be. Former Nintendo of America president Reggie fils is stepping down from the GameStop board. It's only been a year since Reggie joined the board, but Simon and Symantec are both expected to leave the board about the same time. So April Fool's Day was this week, and we got a bunch of funny gags from all the different companies. For example, Call of Duty announced uh, different playlists for COD Mobile featuring various funny things like price only or remote guns. Yacht Club Games said they were opening an actual yacht club, <laughs> which I think is actually a pretty good one. Bug Snacks rebranded to just snacks. <laughs> Apparently they considered uh, bugs a little creepy and off-putting, so you're just capturing uh, a bunch of snacks. And of course, the biggest prank of all, Mario actually died. <laughs> um, it's kind of a prank. Not not really, though. They Nintendo actually did remove Mario 35 along with the digital versions of Super Mario 3D All-Stars Collection and a few other things like the Game & Watch. Once again, it's really sad that these are actually just a limited time thing. Everybody was kind of holding out hope that Nintendo would, you know, say, oh, sorry, we're listening to the fans and people actually love this stuff, let's just keep it. But no, they went ahead and got rid of all the Mario Celebration stuff. Moving right along, Netflix's The Witcher Season 2 just finished filming. I really enjoyed it, I thought it was a really good adaptation of the series, and I'm looking forward to Season 2. The hit game Among Us released their newest map called The Airship. Not only is this map significantly bigger than any of the maps they've made, but there are new tasks and new accessories as well. This is a completely free update too, it's kinda nice. Uh, if we're checking it out, apparently they revamped the art style, which is kinda nice. They added bigger lobbies as well, up to 15 players now. If you want the full write-up on this brand new map, check out the link below for all the details. Now this one's pretty unexpected, at least to me. It looks like MLB The Show 21 is coming to Xbox Game Pass. Now the reason this is so interesting is because MLB The Show, I'm pretty sure was a PlayStation exclusive. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I guess I shouldn't be that surprised with a bunch of PlayStation exclusives coming to PC via Steam and stuff like that. You're also going to be able to play this on your Android devices via the Xbox Cloud Gaming app. It looks like MLB The Show 21 also supports cross-platform play and progression, which is really nice. Xbox was on a roll this week because backwards compatibility is also heading to the cloud as well, starting with a collection of classic Xbox and 360 games. Going through the backwards compatible games list, they got Banjo-Kazooie, Tui, Fable 2, Fallout New Vegas, Gears of War, like so many crazy good games. I think Xbox sums it up completely with this tweet that they posted, I mean, just telling your past self that you could play these 360 games on your phone is mind-blowing. It seems like we can't go a week without talking about CD Projekt Red, but this time CD Projekt Red is in the news for acquiring Canadian game studio Digital Scapes. Now as for studio Digital Scapes themselves, they're gonna be merged into CD Projekt Red to form a Vancouver division. According to the press release, these companies have been working pretty closely together for about three years, and they're gonna be kind of working on more Witcher and Cyberpunk stuff. And I saved the worst news for last, guys, and pains me to say, but the rumors about PlayStation shutting down the PSP, the Vita, and the PS3 stores were true. The PS3 and PSP stores are going to be shut down on July 2nd, while the PS Vita is going to be shut down on August 27th. You'll still be able to download games that you already bought, so it's not like you won't have complete access to the games you already paid for, but it just sucks to see a bunch of digital-only games be completely eradicated. It's reasons like this that I'm such a big advocate for physical copies of games being made, even if they're just some indie title. And now it's time to move on to my favorite segment of the show, being the games that released this week. And last week. Balan Wonderworld. It Takes Two. Kays and the Wild Masks. 
Ty the Tasmanian Tiger 2, Bush Rescue HD. Monster Hunter Rise. And that's gonna do it for me guys. Thank you so much for watching and now that you're all caught up, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys next Sunday.